Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's fourth installment of our virtual facility tour featuring Wilbur Chupullet in Williamson, New York. And I am very uh, glad and honored to have joining us Eric Wilbert, who is the, uh, the president of Wilbur Chupullet, and Jonathan Morrow, who is the first past, past, the immediate past president of ARA. So, guys, thank you and welcome back for this final and fourth. Uh, week of these virtual facility tours. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Um, we've had a lot of great uh, conversation. We've had a ton of people watching these videos. We're, we're really pleased with the uh, with all of the feedback. Um, so with uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to run. We have about a 17 minute video that features the retail environment and not just the um, not just the retail sales floor where people come in and then they purchase as they leave, but also the, the yard, the way Wilberts lays out their vehicles, um, how they do what they do, uh, cuts, all, all kinds of things that we talk about. And so we're really looking forward to that. Do you guys have anything to add before we jump into it? No, oh. I'll, I'll say something. I apologize okay. for my pixelated screen. It's obviously of my my fault, and I know that. But the second thing is, is when you look at this yard, this part of the yard tour, think about how you as a as a yard owner, regardless of full service or self service, can improve how we're doing things. Uh, because so much of what they do, I've already thought about how we could uh, standardize in our facility as a late model yard. Good. Good. Good comment. So, all right. Well, um, without any further delay, uh, here we go. Enjoy. And while you're watching, for those of you watching, you can comment anytime during the video. And when the video is done, um, uh, Jonathan and Eric are going to join me back on screen. And we're going to go through any of the questions that came in during the video. And then we'll answer questions uh, that come in after the video. So we look forward to we look forward to chatting with you guys. So Eric, we are sitting here in your retail area. Yep. And I just opened this. Yep, activated those. So talk to me about what we got going on here. Yeah, uh, four pane, double uh, sliding glass doors. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important just to uh, let the customers in and out. So it's as simple as uh, you know, motion activated doors. So we have those in the front and the rear of the building uh, going out to the yard. So, so. The, the customers are coming in, they just do that, the door opens up, yep. they can come in and out, but it's wide enough to get even a door out or a hood on a wheelbarrow, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm assuming you have wheelbarrows. Yep, yep, wheelbarrows and carts for the customers. So. That's great. Well, let's, kind of, let's take a look in here and see what we got. So we got your batteries and uh, take a look at this, guys. Custom made stickers on all their stuff. How many times, Eric, are you guys getting batteries back in cars that have your stickers on them? Or does uh, it happen? It happens, yeah, quite a bit. So. That's awesome. But it's just branding, so you're branding at all times. Yep, yep. And You'll see uh, that uh, throughout the facility in retail. So. That's that's great. So your plus core, is this a is this a changing thing based on the market, or is this going to be static? Uh, we keep that static. Okay, so. so the customers are very aware of what they're going to pay up front, what they're going to get back. How, how do they get the core money back, or do they just... Um, it, so they have 30 days to bring a core back, then mm -hmm. cores are on the majority of our parts we sell here, not all of them, but uh, they need the receipt uh, for that uh, transaction and then the uh, core part as well. So they can take it as store credit uh, or cash or back on the credit card. Okay, so, so they can get store credit, which would be your preferable option. Yes, yes, so uh, store credit uh, is all returns here except for cores. Oh, so wow. we do not give cash or uh, back on your card whatsoever for returns. That's great. So, so this is the check-in area. So we we walk past the. You got a two dollar. You do two dollar entrance fee, right? Yep, two dollar entrance fee. And you're signing in. Yep, signing in. Today's date. Print your name. Sign and date of birth. Date of birth. And we've got two check-in stations. Why is the date of birth important for you guys? Uh, eighteen must be eighteen. So uh, okay. we would love. Uh, we've tried to. Bump it down to 16, but uh, lawyers and insurance company both uh, wanted at 18. Very strong on 18. So, so one thing I know a lot of people are doing sign-in sheets for their self-service uh, facilities, but are you getting your date of birth? And uh, do you make people give you IDs to get in? If, if we suspect, yes. Okay, we so do if you if they're suspecting anything, they're showing an ID to prove date of birth. 
Yeah. It's crazy, but that's the world we're living in. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so. also get this. This is neat. I saw this when I, we were we were coming up here. You guys sell tools. Yeah, yeah. We provide uh, tools. You know, quite often they either broke the socket they're missing or ratchet, and uh, just to be able to provide a, a quick service to uh, promote these sale of parts. Uh, you'd be crazy not to. Yeah, I mean, you're, and you're, you're probably doing a little bit of a markup, but you're giving your customer yeah. an opportunity to buy parts. Yep, yep. And you got a gift card in there. Oh yeah, yeah, gift cards as well. So those are going in uh, clothing. Oh, well. clothing, yeah, you gotta, yep, you gotta, you gotta sell, the, sell the swag. Look yeah, this. yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> so we're coming up here, but then we, we got the um, we've got the antifreeze. Once again, you got the branding on the antifreeze and the windshield washer fluid. These are uh, in the core, plus core. So you're, you're core again on the bottle. Yeah, so I you want, want the, the bottle back. back right? Yeah, so. Uh, we've tried uh, quite hard to get the price of the bottles down, but I mean, it's, uh, it's still, we're almost a dollar just for the jug just and for the, cap. Just, so you, you want to get that back because you can reuse it a couple oh, times. Oh yeah, yeah, we reuse them, so. That's great. And uh, what, what, what software are you guys running? Or how do you do your point of sale and your Crush. Checking? Crush. Yep, we run Crush throughout the entire facility here. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, and you've got these tires on display here. These are the tires that, well, these tires have little studs in them. And we don't have that. Those are called snow, snow, snow tires. Snow tires. Yeah, something. You can tell I get snow like <laughs> once every two years. Uh, I get a lot of rain in Virginia. Yeah. So, uh, but these are snow tires. So, you guys have uh, they spray painted the tires. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're a little bit unique here um, with how we price tires. So uh, both self-service locations, we and even our full-service location as well that does tires, but we price them uh, in increments of ten. Okay. And starting at ten up to uh, fifty dollars, and we just designate the price by a color on it. So all of these tires have already served their life in the yard okay. and have not sold. So uh, we dismount the good ones mm -hmm. and uh, rack them either inside, outside. Inside we've got uh, pairs. Uh, two sets of four mm -hmm. and singles outside. But, singles are outside. Singles yep. are outside. Yeah. So that's, that's great, man. So one thing I was uh, I was looking at these and I that realized are these your number one seller? Yeah, tires are number one for us. Yes. That's good so. to know. That's good to know. And I think it's probably regular. Yeah. Like most self service facilities. Yeah, tires and wheels. They're going to be the number one or two seller. If they're two seller, I'd like to know what the number one seller is at your yard. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the wheelbarrows here. Uh, definitely have enough wheelbarrows for. Uh, for your customers, and when you when you look at these wheelbarrows, I know I've been to some facilities and the wheelbarrows are um, they're functioning, but they're a little bit you know ratchety or rickety. Yeah, yeah. Do you what, what's your process here, making sure the customers got the the wheelbarrow and it works and everything goes well? Yeah. So we, uh, to be honest, uh, usually on slow days, rain, snow, uh, when we have the opportunity, preferably about once a month, we will go through the wheelbarrows, check them just to wow. make sure nuts, bolts are tight. Mm -hmm. uh, our entire yard is stone, so um, it's it's your not entire the, yard is stone. Yeah, the entire yard is that stone. That cheap. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> so both uh, u pole locations and the full service, but. Uh, it, it, there's going to be you know some rattling going on no matter what you can't avoid it so ensuring that they're you know uh, usable and uh, functioning properly is important. Yeah. So. so do you so you guys have a guy that goes through here and just make sure the things are working okay? Yep. Yep. So we got a stockpile of hardware and nice. uh, some extra parts as well. Um, some things fall off occasionally, so we got to make sure. I mean, and I think that's something that we we got to continue to realize. This is a customer experience. When you're coming into a self-service self-service facility, the customer's coming to you to have an opportunity to save money on a part that's good, and uh, and you're going to do everything in your power to give them the right experience. And here at Wilberts, they're even checking the wheelbarrow to make sure the nuts and the bolts and everything are as secure as possible. And, and uh, that's going to just provide that extra level of going. This is a good facility that cares about their customers. I, I think that's awesome. I think it's great. So on here we've got, I guess it's the layout of the yard. Yep. On the wall. Yep. And so you know what's in what rows, and you've got the logos, you've got the uh, cars, trucks, imports, zeros. Yeah. So we have uh, nine different classifications for the yard. Mm -hmm. uh, we break it down GM car truck, Ford car truck, and so on and so forth, and then Asian, European, and then classics as well. Classics. Um, what would be a classic? Classic, we basically designate as 30 years or older. Okay. Granted, there's always exceptions. Sure. But uh, classics moves a lot slower just because the rotation of the yard on average is about uh, 90 to 120 days, depending on the section. But classics mm -hmm. 
sit out there for probably about a year and it's a great attraction yeah. um, for people, you know, building hot rods or just looking for uh, unique items. So let them sit a little bit longer. But so, we're we're fortunate with the amount of space we have here. Yeah, I mean, so. 35 acres is pretty nice yes, yes, to, to have for a self-serve. But when your customers come in, they come in, they check in, they have the opportunity to talk to the salesperson yep. and they say, I've got a 07 Taurus. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any? And, and, the, and your people have the ability through your software to say we do, yep. and then they say this is the rows that they're in, correct? Yes. It's ours, and then they're coming out here and they can actually match up where they want to go, where they're going to go, and then they make their way into the yard, into yeah. the unknown. Yeah, so typical, uh, they can use the website, which has a live inventory search, search and uh, recent arrivals with our maps of our u pole yards. Uh, so they might be educated before they come here, but we also give interchange through Crush as well of uh, possible interchanges for vehicles and parts. Have you ever thought of the 35 acres doing a geocoding on their phone? Uh, so we Sorry, it's something I just thought of. We we have done that uh, for advertising purposes, yeah. yes. Um, so I mean, you think you just, think, just look for what you want and just like follow your phone? To yeah, like, no, that's a good idea. So look at yeah. that. I'm always trying to help. <laughs> so, anyways, yep. that's awesome. This is great. It's, it's informative, it's colorful, it catches your eye, and then you make your way to the yard if you're ready to go, right? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, the yard's uh, about 2,600 vehicles right now. Uh, we are setting polling every single day. So every vehicle we put in the yard, we take one out. So okay. of those nine classifications, there's always one row that is empty in that section. So it's uh, no wasted travel. So so in every every section, in the sections, like you said, like uh, we were looking on the row, like G four trucks. Yep, four trucks. So there's always gonna be 20 to 25 spots that are vacant. Yep. And then as you're filling in, you're just you're pulling one out, right? Yeah, from the next row. From the down. next row. Okay. Exactly. That's a great setup, and you've got the ability and the capacity to not have a problem with losing customers over a lack of cars. No, no, no. We we have uh, an extensive inventory to say the least. Do you set up? Do you set your cars up uh, when the customers are in the yard? No. So uh, the yard doesn't open. We're open seven days a week, nine to five, uh, twelve months throughout the year, but. Uh, seven to nine is our production work to set all the vehicles and we will not allow the yard to be opened until all the loaders and staff has exited the yard so no loaders in the yard when the customers are in the yard correct are customers allowed to take um any kind of saws off to the yard to cut quarter panels i mean are they allowed to actually do cuts yeah we just started that actually here's a it looks like an example of a cut honestly yeah you're right yeah. they so you, you win you yeah. sold something yep yep so when you cut, so when they cut this, your guys obviously know it's a cut because there's you know marks all around it. But do they they charge it like 100 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever? Um, I think we have four different sizes for cuts that mm -hmm. we charge. Uh, I honestly can't remember. I think the most expensive cut is 150 dollars. Okay. Uh, after including the core, so uh, and then I think the smallest is maybe around 45. All right. So so typically it's a mini spare uh, welded bottom. with a steel wheel. Uh, we usually only use a 15 inch or larger steel wheel just because the height differences uh, if you have a 13 or 14 inch steel wheel which granted are becoming far and few between sure um we try to uh, avoid that yeah so there's a, a reason why we try to avoid the rock panels uh the vehicles that we're typically buying uh there's a reason and the salt belt uh, here the rocker panels are minimal if there's even anything there left so uh control arms uh, subframe uh, structure, you know, leaf springs, axles. So the yard is self-sufficient uh, entirely by the customer. So we have uh, chain fall gantry systems sure. that are uh, mini spares, uh, wheel bearings. Um, you know, you see them all across the country, but. Uh, it's a thousand pound half ton chain fall on it on purpose. I want the chain fall to fail before anything else. Absolutely. So if the customer's yeah. trying to do something, they shouldn't be. Uh, but that those are designed uh, to be mobile and uh, to be utilized in conjunction with our carts that are uh, a little overbuilt as well. So not the wheelbarrows, you actually have like yeah. manufactured carts for yep. the drivetrain. Yep, okay. custom built carts. Um, that the customer can drop you know, the entire drivetrain on or just the motor, transmission, rear axle, pickup boxes, whatever they want. So nine foot six would be from, from pin to pin? Yep, from pin to pin. We have pins in the ground behind every vehicle. The pins are nine feet six apart. 
Um, so it keeps spacing so you can walk around that vehicle with a wheelbarrow very easily. That you know, bullseye in the ground is telling uh, our crew in the morning when we set the vehicle where to put that vehicle. We put the vehicle 18 inches directly north or directly south of hmm. that pin. So, the so one rows, pin is, is identifying the spot, like uh, the middle point of the, the between the between yep, the cars. Exactly. It, it's surprising always to talk to the guys that uh, aren't in the the salt belt and talk to you know average age. So we run typically about 15 years old is our average age of inventory. That's right actually there, that's even. actually a late model. I mean, it's like that's not a late, but a full service yard. That's yeah, very on par yeah. with that. So, so the customers coming back in with their parts now. They found what they wanted. They're excited about being here and. And you've got this nice wash station for them. Yep, yep. And uh, so, yeah, it's important just, to keep them clean. Yeah, but you're keeping them clean, but also the the floor is clean. I saw you had a street sweeper, kind of like a squeegee. A floor scrubber, yeah. And yeah. That, that you that you're using in here on the floor to keep that all operational. I mean, looking good and, and clean, and so people can come in here. They bring their wheelbarrows right back in or their carts. Yep, is that right? Yep, so right we're back walking, in. we're walking back this way. But hold on, is that from the old building? Yeah, it's from the old building. So wow. Yeah. That's actually pretty awesome that it's you, you did that. That's the yeah, setup. Yep, yep. So that was the, the fire, right? November yeah. 2013. Yep, yep, 2013. So well, unfortunate loss, but but you rebuilt it. Oh it's yeah, a phenomenal facility Plus here, right? In disguise. So you're you're coming to check out. You've got a chance to get grab some more tires on the way out if you want. Yep, yep. The more popular sizes. So uh, <laughs> you're coming this way, and this was a neat thing that I saw when we were coming in. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a you know snack machine or yes. drink machine but all the proceeds go to the fire department your local fire department which is yeah the district really we're in thing. so it's a uh, owned operated filled everything all proceeds go to the local fire department so uh we do this at our other self-service location as well and uh, we'll continue to tread in the future but uh, it's a, a great way to say thank you uh, we let them train obviously on site as well but uh, important to have a relationship with the uh, the people that one day hopefully you might not need, but if you do, uh, you have the relationship, yeah, right? Exactly. And I think that was something that we've we've seen in this industry, and I don't think it's going to go away. Or fires. No. We handle volatile systems, you know, gas and cars are you know very flammable if it, if it happens, unfortunately. But you had actually told me that you invite them in, and you want to show them around your facility to say, here, these are the points that if we have a problem, I want you to know where they are. Yeah, yeah. So we try to bring them in once a year. Uh, as much of their staff as possible just to tour them uh, around the location yeah. um, for a, a couple different reasons but obviously to educate them on uh, you know hot spots potential hot spots and uh, you know where your service panels are for electric uh, you know your oil your gases you know any uh, petroleum bulk storage so the uh, you know need to know yeah I mean the things that could be problem. I think that is something that we oftentimes I've heard people uh, be fearful of the uh, fire fire department or anybody coming in to look at your facility. And, and granted, I'm not saying that it's always a great um, great environment or a great situation to be in. But I can say is, as you establish a rapport with your local fire department, what an opportunity to be on the same page of where are where are potential problems. That if there's a problem at your facility, this is where it is. And you'd love to have them on your side helping you and being an advocate for you, being someone who looks at you in a dis like in a disdain or act, you know, not a great light. So oh yeah, it's a great opportunity sure. to just be working with them. Yep. So we're walking out, we've got a couple neat things. So you've got some checkouts. Yep. This is a checkout area. Yeah. This is a checkout area. And um, I see these windows slide, so you can even check out through the window if you need to? Yes, uh, I would say April or March uh, during the pandemic, which we still have the uh, plexiglass there, mm -hmm. uh, Lexan. So we converted these quickly, this one and two down to uh, sliders and then in the front as well. So if we had to, we can push traffic outside, but continue to, you know, in essence, have our doors still open. Absolutely, and so th this, this looks like it's movable. Yep. Is that yep. right? So, um, the whole station, yeah, I'm gonna, yes. I'm not going to sit there and try to pick it up, even though I could. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but it looks like these are all mobile. So does that mean you can change the configuration based on you having a ton of people coming in? Or you having, you know, on a Saturday, you're slammed on Saturday and usually weekends, right? Or good, really beautiful days. Yep, yep, busier days. So you're stacking four or five people in here, checking two people checking in, three people checking out or something like that? Yeah, yeah, similar to that, so. Um, and these stations are movable based on what's going on in your facility, right? Yeah, yeah, so, and Bath as well. We, we built everything modular just so you can uh, change the configuration pretty quickly because things yeah. change. That's great, man, that's, that sounds awesome. 
I think we're good, man. This is awesome. Hey, I just want to thank all of you guys for tuning in and watching our second yard tour at Wilbert's up in uh, Rochester, New York. I know it's not really Rochester, but we're close enough. Close enough. And uh, we're excited to be here. We're so thankful for the Wilbert's family, for everything they've done for the industry, for the association, and for making this great facility for us to be here. So Eric, I just thank you so much, man, for everything. Yeah, thanks for coming out. We appreciate it, and I uh, hope everybody enjoys the tour. Well, I think so. they will, and they probably have a lot of visitors when it warms up. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, see you guys. All right. Well, uh, thanks for everybody. I see we got a, a bunch of people online watching, so we're grateful for that. And now we're at the Q and A portion of the of the tour. And so I know Jono was able to ask a lot of questions while you know while we were doing the tour, but I know he's also got some more. Um, but before we get into Jono's questions, I wanted to take a step back, Eric, to last week's uh, tour. We um, we did the second part of the processing and there was somebody who chimed in with a question right at the end as we were ending the broadcast. And, and so I wanted to get the question uh, addressed. And they, they asked, why don't you um, remove rotors and uh, drums and calipers and things like that? Yeah, um, it, it's uh, kind of ironic because the management team had discussed that uh, the week prior and uh, we're running a, a trial period just to see uh, the, the time associated with removing them with that nibbler. Um, if they're accessible, I'm sure they're uh, easy to remove and obviously we understand the, the value. But uh, yeah, if anybody knows, uh, we'll say the secret to it, we're, we're, and it's not really that difficult, um, all ears for sure. So, but uh, mm -hmm. We appreciate the idea, so I like the um, the education going the other way as well. So thank you. Yeah, hey, Eric, and, and here's a so, question for both of you. Um, hold on, well, I have I have a follow up to that. Can I ask that? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, no, but, no. So so Eric, when I had a chance to uh, to tour a facility in Europe, obviously they have um, have been using it that kind of Cabelco ish machine that uh, that's mailer for a while. And they were even pulling off the center portion of the roof hmm. uh, based on the type of metal it was. And they were also flipping it over. They were grabbing the suspensions out because that was a different type of steel. Um, and the K-frames and all that were coming out and being put in different piles. So that that question you're answering, answering or asking for any more feedback, the company was Silver Lake. And that's one of the companies that we visited with in Europe. And they did an exceptionally good job of giving the shredders, you know, already separated material, they could, they could uh, obviously get, get paid for differently based on the type of metal or steel they were pulling off. But they did, a, it was a group, it was, it was almost ridiculous watching it happen. So I'm sure that Alan would be happy to tell, talk to you about that down the road. He's a great ARA member from the UK. Yeah, no, thank right, you. Man. Well, the question I had was, um, and this is to both of you, after, you know, doing the tour when we recorded it and then watching these tours as we've as we've progressed through the last four weeks and uh, doing q and a's after each one um what have you what like jonathan what have you, is there i know you run a full service but is there has there been any takeaways that you think you could implement even in a full service and eric to you um has have you i mean we just kind of finished up talking about what I'm getting ready to ask is like, what, what things have you kind of realized that maybe you take a second look at or a new look at? Yeah. Uh, the, the first one watching this video is, uh, Jonathan's idea on, uh, geo fencing <laughs> specific vehicles and your wheels start turning, um, with a vast yard, the larger the yard, the harder it is to find the vehicles. And it's, it's quite common, Customers are unable to identify uh, the vehicle they're looking for just because the front end is already torn mm -hmm. apart, mm -hmm. and so it's it you know might not sound to the car buffs um, you know very difficult, but a lot of times the retail questions.
from the customers are this vehicle you say is out there. I can't find it. Where is it? And we, we tell them, you know, go off of the sticker that's on the quarter panel or the back of the vehicle to identify it. But uh, you know, it sounds like a far fetched idea. But to be honest, today's world of technology, it, it might not be too far away. So that's a uh, something that's stuck in my head for sure. Um, and, and it's in essence, that's the whole you pull it model is what can we do to help the customer find and pull the part they're looking for and anything is possible and it, how far do you want to go? So um, it, it's a great, uh, just we'll say exercise to start, you know, get the wheels turning. Yeah. You know, I had the privilege to, to go up to the Wilberts facility and obviously do the yard tour, which we all have gotten a chance to see. Um, but then I also got a chance to go to their full service, which is just as impressive, different model. But one of the things I took away is, you know, dabbling in the you pull it world, self-service world, you guys definitely have a very different customer service. Um, you know, in the full service world, what drives our, the majority of our customers is having the inventory, right? That's going to start the call. That's going to start the conversation or having the ability to get the inventory for the customers. Sometimes we don't always put as much stock as we should in taking care of those retail customers, right? They almost are not to say a, a waste of time, but they're not going to bring the same value as one of your wholesale accounts just for a matter of sheer volume. So I think that takeaway was just watching how far you guys go out of your way to make the experience as good as it possibly could. That's the first thing. And the second thing I think that was something we didn't touch on terribly too much in this in this tour, which is my fault, was the amount of effort you put into maintaining uh, ongoing meetings about safety and how you've empowered different people within the company that last name isn't Wilbert to run those meetings and to have ownership and, you know, this is why safety is important and this is how good you guys are doing. Or we want to, we talked about the stipend you give people for shoes or for equipment or for Wilbert's gear, right? Every, every paycheck they get points towards it. But it's the, it's the idea that we don't need to look down at the self-service because it handles an older car potentially, or has less gross revenue. Right. But the fact that you guys are showing me that, Regardless of what you're doing, we need to always be pushing ourselves to that next level of communication and safety and education and empowering our employees uh, to just make decisions and to own, have ownership of what they're doing within their environment. So I think that's that's a key takeaway for me. Um, it's one of those things. Yeah. One thing that I know, I think we talked about on the tour and um, didn't, didn't make the video was your signage. Uh, out in the out in the yard, um, which uh, it it's one of those things that you don't think about until you need it, right? And you're stuck out in the middle of 35 acres with a with a printout that says you're supposed to be looking in row whatever, and you can't figure out what row you're in, right? And so tell us what you did to remedy that situation. Yeah, so it, uh, it it starts, there's a few different ways we can identify where the vehicles are located. One being uh, the technology uh, web-based tool. Our our website has all the inventory. When you walk in, we can give you a printout as well. Um, but in the UPOL world, it, it's just a row, you know, row uh, 63. So uh, we used to have, uh, you know, one foot square sign on the end of the rows identifying the row number. But... Uh, uh, if you start thinking like a customer, usually you, you find the group of vehicles you're looking for, and then you get uh, head first, we'll say, into looking for that part. And you're not walking down the main aisleways. You're walking through the vehicles, trying to find that tailgate for the F-150. And the, the solution actually was a suggestion. We have a suggestion box at the retail counters and came from a customer, you know, larger row signs. And uh, during our, our monthly committee meeting, uh, we present these suggestions and it, it's an idea that we ran with and we have, they're about 12 foot tall. They're in the middle of the row. They're, I think, uh, three foot wide by two foot tall or maybe maybe three by four, but they're very large row signs and they're just numbers. And so you can see uh, from one end of the yard to the other, the row number that you're in or that you're looking for and being able to quickly identify where you need to be or, or where to go. So it's um, it, it was costly. Uh, they're, they're cemented, anchored into the ground. 
uh, just due to the, the weather we have here, obviously, but uh, they're quite large, um, galvanized, and it, it's that we've had tremendous feedback and has helped tremendously for customers, which, you know, it, I keep saying, and Jonathan was, uh, you know, saying as well, going that extra step to help the customer in the self-service world shouldn't be your, your secondary motivation. It, it should be the primary goal. That is where the dollars, uh, the profit is and to, to sell those parts. So, um, we, we first start thinking from the, the customer's viewpoint, at least we try to, that's the, the hard perspective to, to remember, to think of. So, yeah, I think that's great. I, I think there's a couple of takeaways from what you just said. Uh, you have a suggestion box, you read the suggestions, and when it's a good one, you implement it. I mean, how many times have we walked by a suggestion box at a business and it's, it, you could just look at it and tell nobody's, nobody's touched that thing in, in three years. So that's congratulations on that. Uh, and just having the mindset to understand the value of that. Um, I can tell you, the other thing I was going to point out is I can tell you in, uh, from standing in, the, standing in the yard, you can see you can see every sign from anywhere in the yard. There's, there's no getting lost. If you're looking for a particular row, you can look up from wherever you are and see, see that number. I don't care how far away it is. So uh, really, really good job. Nick with, from Facebook, um, he had this question. I know some people jump in at different portions of the video we, we addressed, but I wanted to, not, to use this question um, for you to answer. And then also maybe, maybe have a quick discussion about charging versus not charging, how you ended up at your amount, things like that. Yeah, so at our uh, cell service locations, we do charge admission. It's a $2 charge. Uh, it can be cash or credit. Uh, we, we do not care uh, how we obtain the $2, but uh, in our viewpoint, your the $2 charge one is uh, solidifying the contract with the customer, just in case if anything went awry, uh, our, our law firm uh, encourages that. But secondly, the uh, the tire kickers, or we'll say the the window breakers, hopefully it uh, minimizes the individuals that are out there uh, just to, we'll say, wreak havoc. And um, it, it uh, I don't know the other side of it. Uh, I know a yard just a few hours south of us that, that doesn't charge admission and they, they tried to start charging admission. And I think there were riots uh, outside their doors. So it uh, didn't go so well for them. But it, to each their own, uh, I can definitely see the other side of it. And I can see even charging more, uh, we'll say for the more late model self-service yards that uh, some individuals are, are playing around with as well. So, um, but it, it's uh, something that's worked very well for us having an admission charge. That's good. That's interesting. Uh, uh, a later model uh, self-serve yard. I hadn't, hadn't seen that yet. Jonathan, have you? I, I have it, but some days I want to do that. Um, but <laughs> no, uh, I think a question that I was thinking about, Eric, as we were watching this would be if you're out there and you have a self-service facility and uh, you see what your family and your company and your employees have been able to create, what would be the first two things that you would recommend them change first? Like if they had, if they just had a yard they purchased and uh, or they have a yard that just in existence, but they haven't put a lot of effort or energy into it. Um, what would be the first two things you'd tackle of all the things from processing to sales to yard setup to acquiring cars to depolluting to everything? What would be the areas to say, guys, this is where you should start? Uh, purchase is number one, in my opinion. Uh, you you got to start from the beginning. So. Uh, Purchasing is is everything, and acquiring that vehicle is first and, and foremost. However, uh, acquiring it at the right price as well. So it takes time to build uh, your your street customer base, and there's obviously a few different avenues to approach that. And then uh, the vendors, as we call them, the business to business uh, takes uh, time as well to build those relationships. So uh, acquiring the vehicles. And then on the self-service model, I would say you'd have to put an emphasis on your curb appeal, uh, what your store looks like. Image for us 
is very important just to be accepted in the community and uh, to be a welcomed place to visit, not just by, we'll say the gearheads, but uh, individuals that are, are dressed nicely. Um, I mean, we have suits and heels walk through the doors and going out to grab a part on their lunch break. But, uh, you know, an emphasis on having a, an inviting, attractive retail space, which translates into your yard as well. Uh, cleanliness organization is paramount for us at Wilberts. And uh, I, I luckily have a very large family to attribute those uh we'll say values to and my um, you know, uncle's father and the grandfather who started it all. So um, hats off to my family as well. It's not just me. Yeah, the Council of Wilberts. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you do a great job of, of honoring that legacy. And and, and uh, I, know, I know that everybody in the family is really proud of you, what you're doing there at the, at the U-Pullet. And um, we, are, we are very grateful uh, that you, you opened your doors to us and and let us come in and do this. And uh, Jonathan, do you have any more questions or are we gonna round this out? You know, I think the last thing, you know, obviously ARA is bringing this presentation to anybody who's in this industry, but Eric, if you could say one of the big things that ARA has done to help Wilberts, because Wilberts has done a lot to help ARA, you know, with, with you, know, you, you moved the ball on the, about a ball on the field for us. You're, you're handling so much stuff in New York with a, legislation of being the current president of ARA and ARA and Y. Um, but what is something that ARA has done that is uh, possibly really been, you know, helpful for Wilberts and, and for your family and the company, and maybe something that people who are on the fence watching this, they're self-service, they're full service yard owners, and, uh, and, and might encourage them to get into ARA or get involved in ARA a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I, I would say uh, hard to answer that with with just one item. But uh, you know, as a an individual who grew up, uh, you know, went away to college, but uh, looked forward to coming back to this industry and uh, be, being educated uh, at the conventions, conferences, I think is uh, invaluable, uh, especially as a, a young gun making those uh, you know networking at those conferences, uh, meeting the vendors, having an open mind, you know, yes, we have our ways, but let's go talk to these vendors. Um, so making those connections, networking, uh, first and foremost, uh, foremost, but, uh, the, the other one that pops into my mind is, uh, the resources that ARA is continuing to develop. Uh, this is a great example of those resources. You think of where the industry is going uh, with electric and hybrid vehicles and alternative fuels and uh, your push uh, as the National Association to provide the, the tools uh, or knowledge for us uh, to obtain, I think is incredible. Um, you know, from the, the unknown is what scares us. And uh, I think of, you know, when you were telling the story about your uh, vehicle being wrecked and how it got totaled. And then there was a conversation later about, uh, you know, what's to come. And mm. it, it, to me, I, I, it gets me amped up, excited uh, because I love change and I welcome it and uh, overcoming obstacles change is uh, what's going to strengthen you as an individual and your team. So helping us with that change, is I guess what I'm getting at is what I'm incredibly thankful for uh, from you guys and the entire association and members as well. Hmm. It's good. That's awesome. Well, one of the things I wanted to um, I wanted to share. Let me see if I can do this. I wanted to acknowledge uh, that this last year, um, Wilberts was awarded the uh, award for car certification. I'm trying to bring up the. Here we go. There it is. So this was uh, this was um, last year. Uh, Wilberts got the Certified Automotive Recycler Award, and you'll see that uh, big Stanley Cup-looking trophy that now resides at, at Wilberts until the next recipient. So um, that's a we we feel very strongly at ARA about the car program. And we want more and more recyclers to be involved in it. We want to help recyclers uh, 
you know, improve and continue to do what they do in a progressive, efficient way. And the Certified Automotive Recycler program does just that. So congratulations to your family again on that. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're very proud of it and uh, can't wait to pass it on and see who's the next re recipient as well. So thank you guys. Absolutely. So, well, that does it uh, for this. This That wraps up our four weeks, our four segments for anybody watching. If you've missed any of it, you can catch all four segments on our, there's three ways to do it. You can see all of the videos are on ARA University, uh, along with the BNR auto wrecking virtual facility tour that we did back in November. And then also on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. So the entire four four segment series for Wilberts and three segment series for BNR Auto Wrecking is there. So you can go through and watch it if, if you're watching this now and you're interested in seeing more or you missed the section. Uh, if you have questions, if you watch something and you have questions about it um, after this broadcast is over, you can certainly message us through Facebook, YouTube. You post a comment, I'll get it. I'll make sure it gets addressed. I'll, I'll reach out to Eric and I'm sure he'll be happy to answer any questions afterwards. So I um, want to thank everybody. This has been fun. I think it's been great. I hope everybody watching has enjoyed it. We appreciate all your positive feedback and we're looking forward to doing this again. We're not sure where we're going next, but this has been so well received. I'm sure we're going to go somewhere and, uh, and do another virtual tour. So thanks you guys. I like that idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.